elementary school, the land of nostalgia, childhood bullies, and jump rope chanting. It's where I developed my ego as being the smart kid, always being asked for answers and actually trying to be the teacher's pet. I have a Filipino mom who would talk about her achievements and how she expected me to continue her legacy. I once spelled sentence with an A and she scolded me. I just had to be the best. In the Chula Vista Elementary School District, students participate in a speech contest. This is an engagement technique to prompt the students to learn how to write and present speeches as the future leaders of America. Starting from the fourth grade up to sixth grade, the children compete with each other to present a speech in their classroom. Two of the speeches from the class get to perform it to the school assembly where the staff will again pick two to represent the whole school at the district building among the other representative schools. None of the students genuinely cared about it. It was simply a yearly writing assignment that our teachers forced us to complete with the intangible hope of, of being chosen and receiving a monetary prize. Literally nobody put effort into the speeches. The funny thing is, I didn't care about it either. As a kid, I wasn't very good at writing, nor did I have much experience with presenting in front of people. Fourth grade, I remember improvising my speech on the spot to my classmates. Fifth grade, I also didn't do well. Sixth grade though, for my last chance, I was somewhat determined to actually go for it. Realistically, this speech contest was all for the sake of the parents showing off their kids' talent. Only after I got older did I realize that the parents were prouder of the children than the children themselves. That's the whole reason why my mom pushed me to perfect this speech. Both of my parents competed to be at the tops of their classes and impressed on me the same mindset. Once my math teacher accidentally inputted the wrong grade and I had gotten scolded by my dad for a C that wasn't mine. As I wrote my speech, I was pretty satisfied with what I had written until my mom started breathing down my neck. She made me edit a lot of it and recite it over and over again, even when I wanted to stop. Presenting the speech in class wasn't too bad. I was definitely nervous, but I got through it fairly smoothly. But of course, as an egotistical brat, as I listened to my other classmates' speeches, I knew I did better than them. I answered the prompt clearly, had valid reasons, and had an acceptable stage presence. But I did have one challenger, Paloma. Paloma was new. She came the previous year in fifth grade. Good at memorizing, quickly answering questions before me, and never afraid to speak her mind. Little me would never acknowledge that I was jealous of her and her pretty brown hair. Instead, it manifested into a one-sided academic rivalry. Who was this girl raising her hand faster than me, answering all the questions that only I was supposed to know, trying to steal my spotlight? Admittedly, Paloma's speech was amazing too. I knew that ours were certainly going to be the top two of our class, but then came Emma. Emma was also a newer student, not to be mean, but no one really liked her. She was nice, of course, but always gave off the vibes of a pick-me girl. It takes one to know one. <laughs> During this one lunch, I was playing guitar and singing Blank Space with my friends when all of a sudden, Emma joined uninvited with her neon orange trombone. Having an indomitable spirit, she just did what she wanted. And Emma's speech wasn't bad. <laughs> It was quite the tearjerker, but I refused to let myself be touched by it. The reason being that she avoided the prompt entirely. Especially for an elementary level writing assignment, you're meant to clearly respond to the prompt. Restate the question into your thesis, of which the prompt for that year was along the lines of, what would the world be like without this thing? I went for a general answer and picked music. Of course, my mom was iffy about the topic and wanted to change it, but I refused. However, Emma's speech was about her disabled little sister. No hate to her for choosing to speak about this topic, 
but I don't know what part of the prompt she was answering by talking about her love for her sibling. Her speech was a hit with everyone else in the room regardless. Some days passed as Mrs. Myers processed the speeches and we all could have cared less about the results as we ran around the play structure during recess. That was until Mrs. Myers announced who would be moving on. She was pleased to say that Paloma and I would be continuing our journey. I knew it! We were the best representative options anyway. Hardworking leaders and, you know, actually answered the prompt. <laughs> I'm sure that Paloma and I were our teacher's favorite anyways. So, take that, Emma. I celebrated with my family, and when I came home to deliver the news, seeing the approving faces of my parents. I'm sure Paloma was happy too, and I was glad for her. I set aside my pride momentarily to share the glory together, but something went down that we never could have predicted. As time went on and the date of the school assembly inched closer, our teacher called me and Paloma back inside during lunch. Mrs. Meyer sat us down and told us, I'm very proud of you both. You two really deserve to move on in the competition, but so does Emma. She really wants to join, but for that to happen, one of you would have to give up your place. Those were a long 10 seconds. Through the blaring silence, I exchanged glances with Paloma and my teacher. Then, I briefly caught a glimpse of Emma's mom watching us from the window. <laughs> Striking blue eyes, the same as Emma's, glaring back at me. I definitely did not want to budge. This was my chance, my opportunity, to achieve something that I never put effort into before. Paloma probably felt the same way, and she was also the new kid after all. I was even rooting for her too. I didn't want either of us to break until Paloma spoke. She can take my place, she said with a croak. You know, I was almost convicted enough to give in as well, but I was disappointed that she couldn't stand her ground either. Mrs. Myers thanked Paloma as if speaking on Emma's behalf. It's not like Emma talked to us beforehand to warn us about our downfall. I wonder what her face looked like when she heard that she successfully stole Paloma's place. When the day of the school assembly finally came around, I prepared myself and even invited my family and friends to watch me. All of the younger grades went first, from all the fourth grade representatives to fifth, then the sixth. I did well, maybe not as good as in the classroom, but I was confident. The judge table was composed of teachers and other staff members acting as the district judges would. By the time it was Emma's turn, I couldn't help but roll my eyes at the fact that her speech still didn't answer the prompt, and yet the crowd goes wild. <sighs> Final judgment, Emma would be moving on as the sixth grade representative of our school. Relaying the news to my parents, I braced for impact. Nothing happened. Just an, oh well, sighing the man. I was okay, I think. Meanwhile, Emma's mom was probably throwing a whole party to celebrate her daughter's well-deserved achievement. But now that I'm older, I can't help but assess what happened. Was it biased? Bribery? I hate to bring it up but Mrs. Myers, Emma, and her mom are white. What made Emma and her mom believe that she deserved the spot of a Filipino or a Mexican girl who already earned it? It must have been her mom who really pushed for this to happen. Yet, I couldn't help but feel so betrayed by my teacher, whom I, I still consider as one of my favorite teachers, even if I wasn't the one who took a loss. But is that really how begging works? Paloma and I were pressured into a position to give up out of kindness. It was definitely an option, a choice, but Emma's desperation, was Emma's desperation so genuine enough to compel her to beg for something that didn't belong to her in the first place? She meant well, but she shouldn't believe that a spot was still up for grabs. I tell myself that I was right to stand my ground, but I also tell myself that it was good for Paloma to give up her spot. Now that I'm in college, I have the freedom to do whatever I want and be whoever I want to be. 
I've grown, not particularly in height, but in maturity. As I grew in my faith as a Christian, I tried to develop humility and put away the past because what's done is done. I feel like that little kid in me is over it now, but why am I still writing about it? Samantha Gonzalez.